गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद डायरेक्टर मेडिकल एजुकेशन एराज लखनऊ मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल लखनऊ आई हैव बीन फार्मर डायरेक्टर वल्लभ भाई पटेल चेस्ट इंस्टीट्यूट दिल्ली एंड आई हैव आल्सो सर्व्ड के जी एम सी फॉर फोर्टी ईयर्स एज टीचर एंड हेड इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पलमरी मेडिसिन माय सेकंड टॉक इन द सीरीज ऑफ एक्स रेज चेस्ट एक्स रेज as i promised that would be the how to approach a normal looking chest x ray what i am going to do in this talk in my four decades of career as a chest consultant when i have seen patients when their x ray either the report is normal written as normal or on a casual look x ray appears to be normal then since patient had symptoms had some problem so I investigated these patients and what i found in those patients that i am going to share with you and this is my lifetime experience as far as these cases are concerned so if you see the normal x ray as i said in my earlier lecture that whether you approach it systematically if you are beginner whether you approach it globally and on seeing the x ray you find either it is normal looking or normal or else the report has also been written as a normal x ray so in the normal x ray you know nothing will be visible everything every point will be normal but this is the x ray i am going to show you of a gentleman who looks normal but problem with this gentleman was he had hemoptysis so that's why he came to us but x ray if you see the chest x ray preview it appears normal but there is some doubt on the right retroclavical area so what we did we did lordotic view as i told in my first lecture the indication of lordotic view is that if there is some doubtful shadow either in the retroclavical area or some middle lobe collapse you have to order lordotic view so we ordered this lordotic view and we find that there is a lesion in the right upper zone and finally it was diagnosed as tuberculosis and he was treated and got cured what i am trying to say those were the errors of non ct errors when of course the ct thorax can tell you everything but even with the simple x rays especially in the poor countries like ours ordering a lordotic view had made all the difference this is another lady who you see the chest x ray it appears to be normal but if you see it very carefully what you find that the right dome of diaphragm is bit elevated so as i said while talking about the x rays that this may be even normal in some of the individuals but as i said the lady had symptoms of fever and chest pain so we suspected that right dome of diaphragm appears to be elevated so we investigated this lady thoroughly and we ordered a right lateral decubitus view as i have discussed with you one of the indication for la right lateral decubitus view was suspected infra pulmonary effusion now you can see that fluid has spilled over all over chest when intrapulmonary effusion term came somebody thought that it is insisted effusion no it's not insisted effusion as you see that fluid has spread out we aspirated the fluid diagnosed as tubercular and patient got well this is the another lady who x ray looks like a normal but if you see carefully the left dome of diaphragm is higher up than the right one i have already described you even in some percentage of cases really left dome of diaphragm may be higher up 
But the another finding was, if you see the x-ray carefully, another finding was the dome of diaphragm is very thick. So, and this is one of the classical example of left sided infrapulmonary effusion. Now, you can compare it when fluid was aspirated and treated, you can compare with this x-ray that diaphragm came out to its normal position and even that thickness has also disappeared. So, this was a classical example of left sided infrapulmonary effusion. Not that whenever you find a, a diaphragm is thick like that, every time it will be an infrapulmonary effusion. This I found this was a normal x-ray where dome of the diaphragm is thick, but only contrast is here the left dome of diaphragm as its normal place. It is not higher up. This is another case where you find that thick dome of diaphragm, but no pleural effusion. This is another, I treated this gentleman quite way back in 90s. He was 65 year old male and he came to me with recurrent cough with expectoration and then his problem was recurrent hemoptysis for last 40 years. So, those were the eras where no CT thorax was there before. So, he was not, he came to me for just one reason why I have a recurrent hemoptysis. And if you see his x-ray, x-ray appears to be within normal limit. So, what I did that I advised him as, as I was showing to you that if you go to the overexposed film sometimes you may find shadow behind the heart. So, if you say some suspicion was there in the retrocardic area on the left side. So, we got the CT thorax done and you wish shown very clearly that uh, there is a localized bronchiectasis. And another indication for localized bronchiectasis, if you can see, you will find a persistent coarse crepes at left infrascapular area. So, he was diagnosed as bronchiectasis. So, at least he got the reason. This is another lady where x-ray appears to be normal, had recurrent hemoptysis, overexposed film done has shown some doubtful shadow behind the heart and CT thorax has clearly shown there is a bronchiectatic changes. So, that is the example of two cases of bronchiectasis which can present as a normal x-ray. We say that 15 percent of the patient of bronchiectasis x-ray may be within normal limits. So, so, you have to take care of this such situation. This is another lady about 61 year old who was having cough and expectoration and breathlessness for last 3 to 5 years. He was regular beauty smoker for 35 years, used to smoke beauty for 15 days per day and she developed a new symptom. Two new symptoms what she developed? Right sided chest pain and recurrent hemoptysis for last one year. So, lady who was in background of COPD had developed new symptoms like chest pain and recurrent hemoptysis. I always say if COPD patient develops a new set of symptoms, she or he must be investigated. In this line, we investigated this lady, although appears x-ray appears to be normal except that there is some little widening, if you see it carefully in the mediastinum and that what we did CT, you can see there is a mass in the mediastinum and uh, you are, can also see there is emphysematous bullies changes and you can also see there is evidence of pleural effusion that speaks about the chest pain and uh, finally, uh, the uh, we did uh, since there was a endobranchial lesions were not visible, we did transtracheal needle aspiration which shows that that squamous cell bronchogenic carcinoma, squamous cell was diagnosed along with COPD and bone scan also suggested. So, what I am trying to say quite advanced case of lung cancer, but still x-ray was normal looking x-rays. So, this is one of the DD you can think of. This is another uh, uh, person whom x-ray looks normal, even lateral view looks normal, 
But he again had a problem of recurrent hemoptysis. And we did it, the CT thorax, you can see very clearly that there is a mass lesion in the right main bronchus. Even that size not creating much of the chest x-ray finding and this was the CT picture. And finally, we did bronchoscopy and we could find growth covered with necrotic slough and that was biopsied, endobronchial biopsy was done and that showed bronchogenic carcinoma, squamous cell type. This gentleman presented with severe chest pain over the back, although x-ray looking normal, but there was some doubt in the right paratracheal area and that sido was localized posteriorly and we did CT thorax which you can see very clearly there is a mass and which is eroding one of the vertebra. That was the cause of the severe pain and ultimately we did transthoracic lung biopsy and we could diagnose bronchogenic carcinoma. This is another gentleman, he was, uh, he is a liar, but uh, if you see his faces, you can diagnose. You can say these are the, he has corneal opacity, he has pox marxes, so, so he had suffered from smallpox in, in during the childhood. And he came with this x-ray and somebody, he has received three courses, two, three courses of anti-TB drugs, but you see that x-ray is... Uh, not very normal, but some shadow is visible in the right pericardic area and when we did CT thorax, we could find there is a lot of bronchiectatic changes. So, bronchiectasis is what I am saying, sometimes very hidden picture, sometimes x-ray is normal, they can present, but they are all symptomatic. So, and if you do a clinical examination, you can diagnose bronchiectasis very well. Again, a lady came to me in 93 with recurrent hemoptysis. And if you see the x-ray carefully, it looks normal. And when I did lateral view, that was given no information. Even lateral view appears to be normal. And when I did allodotic view, here you can see the clavicle has gone out of the field and you can see the triangular shadow in the pericardic area, which is textbook picture of the middle lobe collapse. So, middle lobe collapse, as I said in my first lecture, that it may not be visible in chest x-ray PA view, even lateral view, but the view where it can be visible is lardotic view. Of course, it will be visible in CT scans. This is another case of Mr. Rajendra, who, who had similar complaints, had x-ray hardly any finding in chest x-ray, but we did lordotic view. Similar one, whenever you see middle lobe collapse, you will see find this, para, this triangular shadow in pericardiac area. This is the another lady, interesting story with this lady was, she had recurrent ba massive bouts of hemoptysis. With the extent that he received many courses of anti-TB drugs, by private practitioner and the last treatment was prescribed with the second line drugs because the hemoptysis was not being controlled. If you see the x-ray very casually, you may find nothing. X-ray appears to be normal, but if you concentrate behind the heart, you find there is a double heart border and double heart border means there is a some evidence of left lower lobe collapse. So, we investigated her further, but more than that, at that time we used to do bronchography. We performed bronchography, which is typically showing evidence of dilated bronchus. They are crowded together, showing that that lung volume is reduced. And finally, you see the lateral view, dilated bronchus filled with dye. So, this was an bronchiectasis, left lower lobe leading to collapse of the left lower lobe and finally causing recurrent hemoptysis. And ultimately, we got his lower lobe removed, left lower lobe lobectomy was done and she became asymptomatic. That is the importance of diagnosis while you treat any patients. This is another lady about 25 year female. 
She presented with cough and expectoration, which was purulent, fever for last 10 years, recurrently occurring, and recurrent hemoptysis for last 5 years, breathlessness for last 3 years, and uh, he was given anti-TB drugs in between without any response. And if you see this x-ray, x-ray looks like uh, normal, but except that the right volume of the right lung is less, cardiophrenic angle is obliterated. So, you can see in bronchoscopy that there is a pedunculated polyp and it was diagnosed as polyp on the right lung, right lower lobe. This was an, a gentleman about 30 year old male. He was known diabetes for last 6 years, not well controlled, but 3 months back he developed fever, cough with expectoration and breathlessness and loss of appetite. There is no previous history of trauma or instrumentation and there is no use of systemic steroids. And you see this was the x-ray picture. X-ray appears to be within normal limits. This was in year 2003. And then we got, since X-ray was within normal limit, he had symptoms. So, we got CT thorax done. In CT thorax, you find multiple caseating mediastinal lymph nodes. And further, if you can see the CT cuts, you for, apart from right and left main bronchus, there is another third hole visible in the CT. And when we did bronchoscopy, we could find there is, a, there is a gap into the lower end of trachea. We did biopsy from granulation tissue that is shown to be tubercular. And finally, we diagnosed him as lymphotracheal fistula with mediastinal lymphadenitis caused tubercular with diabetes mellitus. Now, you can see that what is the power of anti-TB drug. We were very in a doubt how to treat this gap, then we gave him anti-TB drugs along with diabetes management and you know after three months his gap closed in the trachea and patient became well. So, what I am trying to say anti-TB drugs are very powerful. So, this is the another gentleman who was referred to us, he was complaining of dysphagia loss of weight and appetite and recurrent hemoptysis. So, he came to us with hemoptysis. Somebody because he has dysphagia, so his varium swallow was done and varium swallow, when varium swallow was done, then whole of the bronchial tree was visualized. So, we became suspicious, we did CT thorax, we did OGD and then in CT thorax, you may find there is a gap between trachea and esophagus. And when bronchoscopy was performed, a lot of mass like structure and with there is a hole into the trachea and this was tracheoesophageal fistula because of the CO, CA esophagus. Esophagus was also investigated and we can find growth there. So, what I am trying to say is some of these normal x-rays can come like this and there are many hidden diagnoses is present there. And this is the another lady who presented with dry cough and x-ray appears to be normal. CT thorax, there is some nodular shadows and in TLC, DLC, eosinophil count was very high and she was diagnosed as tropical pulmonary eosinophilia and she was treated and got well. This is another lady. This was the era when she presented with cough and breathlessness with of about 5 months duration, dry cough and breathlessness. If you see the x-ray carefully, uh, on apparent look, it looks normal, but if you see carefully, there are some haziness in the lower zone, especially more on the left side. And we, we did perform the spirometry which shown severe restrictive disorder and CT thorax was done and has shown typically findings suggestive of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis means there are reticular markings, there are some honeycombing, they are more at bases and more in the subpleural region. 
and it was patient was diagnosed as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is another case, a doctor about 63 year old female and she was diagnosed as adenocarcinoma colon and was given oxaloplatin 5 FU and leucovarin for 6 cycle 4 months ago. And she developed cough and breathlessness and x-ray you can see in front of you is near normal and when his spirometry was done that has shown the severe restrictive abnormality and when CT thorax was done. So, she was diagnosed as drug induced pulmonary fibrosis and good news is drug induced when, when drugs were already stopped we used some steroids and she became well her pulmonary function test returned to normal and uh, 87 percent FVC and CT thorax became normal and C became all light as far as these fibrosis was concerned. Not that every fibrosis sometimes drug induced fibrosis if you stop the drug and if you give some steroids they may add their treatable disease. So, ladies and gentlemen we have come to end of my presentation and my when when you have seen that certain x-rays when they look like a normal x-rays and if you see them carefully you may find some finding you may not find any find any any abnormality still if the patient are symptomatic you have to investigate such type of the patient and you have to find out the cause. So, take home messages with this type of a presentation which is my lifetime experience that single x-ray sometimes you see x-ray single may not be sufficient when you come to such type of cases think of other views you have seen lodotic views you have seen the other views think of old x-rays sometimes you have to compare and then you have to find out think of other radiological procedure x-ray is not panacea not that you will get everything in x-ray then even after doing CT you may not get the diagnosis you may think of other investigation like doing some other investigation and Finally, if you are still in doubt always I say think of clinical picture because many times when you suspect anything clinically then you can diagnose. So, if this approach you will keep in such type of patients who have a normal looking chest x-rays then you will be able to diagnose you have seen with this presentation different type of pulmonary conditions which may present with the normal chest x-ray. Thank you very much.